see the size of my beak in it, <laughs> on my T-shirt. Yeah, and the T-shirt picture. Um, a fascinating feature entitled, Who Does Jason Plato Think He Is? You better tell the story, mate. <coughs> well, um, this was an idea for this feature that was born out of um, a good papa of mine, Marcus Simmons, who was... We kind of grown to get together in cars. When I first started, he was the first reporter I would speak to at Autosport. <coughs> and, uh, you know, I've got kind of interesting surname. And I, everywhere I go, in, you know, in the world, I always pick up a telephone directory, in, you know, in whatever hotel I'm staying in, and just have a look and see how many Plato's are around. Because there's not, men not many. And we've only traced uh, three independent families in the UK uh, that we're not related to. But we, we, you know, we think. So... Marcus picked up the idea, which was born right from that TV show, you know. So he said, well, why don't we, it'd be quite interesting to go back in time and have you gone far? We said, well, no, we haven't really. We've hit a good, good wall. So that was his task. And six months ago, maybe a bit longer, he, he started on his journey. And he's gone back, I think, eight eight generations on, on my dad's side and, and even longer on my mum's side. So it's still an unfinished project, if you like. But, yeah, we, we did a really interesting fit feature there. And there's some some staggering things that have happened. Some of them controversial, yeah, and, some, and some, you know, really life-changing for for, um, for all of us here now, and that Abraham Darby, who was the bloke who was basically responsible for the Industrial Revolution, is in my tree. <laughs> and there was, a, there was a fight, wasn't there, on a bridge, and, so, and sort of uh, 40 lashes at dawn, yeah. It sounds like the British Touring Club. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I can blame my ancestors for, for, for that. But yeah, there was a, a fight on a, on a bridge, which I, I live three miles from this bridge now, and it's a bridge that's that's kind of close to traffic, but it's by the side of the road as it built a, you know, a more updated road called Cullen Bridge, and it was the scene of a, of a civil war unrest in 1600s, and there's one of those blue plaques on the bridge, but in, in 18, whatever it was, uh, Henry Plato, I think it was, my great sixth grandfather removed or whatnot, um, gave gave some instructions to his son to give this other bloke a damn good thrashing. And if he didn't, he would give his son a damn good thrashing. Anyway, there was there was a proper kick off, there was a, you know, some dusty cuffs. Um, police with funny helmets and whistles obviously arrived, arrested them all. And uh, the penalty was uh, Henry Plato was given a fine of six shillings, which we worked back is about 500 quid, so it's a lot of money. Or if he didn't pay that, he'd do 10 days hard labour. And we can't find out what he did, but he would have taken the 10 days hard labour. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's, there's no way you'd have 600 quid lying around which you have to pay for, you know, for 10 days. There's a guy on the mum's side who is her uncle. Uh, called Jimmy James, I believe, and he was responsible for, he was head of light entertainment at BBC TV, and he was responsible, his father was responsible for, for discovering Ken Dodd, uh, Les yeah. Dawson, uh, Roy Castle, and a few others. Um, had I known that, I might have been able to get myself on blankety blank. I, yeah, I can see a little bit or of... even get a job on that, 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 that crap TV show on BBC One, whatever it's called. Reverse gear, I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not going to I won't, I won't say it. I'm not light entertainment, though, am I? I'm, no. I'm serious, you You're heavy entertainment, you are. Yeah. I can see a little bit of Les and Ken in you, actually. <laughs> can you? Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, read it, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already. It's yeah, hilarious. It's, it's, a great, it's a really interesting thing. And I, and I think, actually, for the magazine, it's a real departure. The first for them, actually, to put something which is a bit off the wall, isn't it? Yeah. Marcus, isn't, he doesn't want to do it again. <laughs> it's taken them years. Feeling about having spec chassis, so they're all the same underneath, control costs, keep it fair, and having a body on it that's different from the next one, so they all look good. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I think one of the reasons why the BTCC is so popular is people can identify with the brand of car they drive, and uh, you know they get behind the brand. What, what, what's underneath really is kind of irrelevant ish. Um, but so long as the race is exciting, the cars look good, uh, you know, they're fast enough, um, and, and it's real racing, that's what, that's why over the course of last year, 350,000 people came to watch touring car races. You know, it's not contrived in any way, uh, it's, you know, there's heroes and villains, and... Uh, Which one are you? I'm a villain. You are, yes. Uh, I made a conscious decision a few years ago, there's a bit more money in being a villain, I think. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Plato, hero or villain? Villain! Perfect, it's working there, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> you can be quiet. So, uh, um, yeah, Barry Williams, who's yeah. been, been racing even longer than Jason. Well, Barry is officially 235 years old and looking mighty fine on it, yeah. I have to say. There's, there's not many drivers around the world who can, For sure. who can slide an Austin A30 better than him. And he's much better at talking to girls than you. <laughs> well, yeah, he it's is. clear. I've I seen mean, him in action. I mean, Epic. Look at my beak. <laughs> Did you say beak? I did, yes, I didn't get as much of the laugh I was hoping for. Yes, tumbleweed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've lost me completely. Um, so yeah, BTCT, I think it's in a great place. Um, you know, whilst, 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 you know, I, I, I had a go at Toka and Alan Gale last year. Um, we, we're still all great friends. We, we, you know, you can't be happy with everybody all the time. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm a very... You know, I wear my heart asleep. If I don't like such something, I'll say it. Uh, and that's, that's, that's just, you know, sometimes you get good things from me, sometimes you don't. You know, sometimes about this, you know, the, the hangover started to wear off, but, but, you know, the night before was a particularly strong night. I remember seeing you buffooning around. So yesterday was a long, old day for me. And uh, it just kicked off. And I wasn't I wasn't really sharp enough when, when Soph, uh, my wife, jumped in the car in the driver's seat and, and I jumped and I went, that's a mistake. Because obviously if, if you drive, then you don't have to deal with World War Three, which is going on the back. And uh, so I had to deal with it all the way home. And it's amazing how little girls can get so wound up about Tinkerbell and who's got Vidya and who's got, I forget their names now. Yeah, it was, it was a, but they are delightful. When they're being, you know, when they're behaving themselves. Just to be clear, I stopped drinking at nine this that, morning. That is a lie. <laughs> I think it's nine thirty. Yeah. We're going to stop there now. Uh, it's lunchtime. Um, thank you, mate. Pleasure. Have Pleasure. a great year, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the um, simply unique Jason Plato. <laughs> oh, Thanks, mate. Right. So, um, got about a twenty minute break now, and I. Don't often give free things away. <laughs> Especially to millionaire racing drivers.